Hello, Dr. Walker and Dr. Liu. We are Team 8, also known as Second Wind, here to present our DR 3.2. I'm Jason Smith, a mechanical engineer. Saigu Zhou, computer engineer. Omar Garibai, mechanical engineer. Makala Dang, electrical engineer. Nate Geller, mechanical engineer. So the original project plan that we started at the beginning of fall quarter is that we wanted to update the aesthetic and ergonomic design of the incentive sprawler. It's very bland and boring overall and honestly a bit uncomfortable to hold. So we wanted to be able to change that so that the patient is more likely to interact and engage with the device as they're recovering in the hospital. Uh, our second point was that we wanted to integrate a control pack device with it to combine both the inhalatory, uh, inhalatory uh, exercises of the incentive sprouter and the exhalation therapy provided by the OPEP. OPEP standing for oscillating positive expiratory pressure. Yeah, and then uh, another deliverable that we wanted to show by the end of this quarter was an electrical system that is capable of recording when the piston reaches its prescribed volume by the doctors. And we also wanted to start our housing or get a basis of what the electrical housing will be for the sprometer that is able to be movable to the prescribed volume. Here is the overall updated setup and ergonomic redesign of the sprometer. First and foremost, we have the electrical housing is updated. It used to be a large block that looks kind of added and slapped on at the end. Now, as you can see here in the illustration, that it is much more low profile is much more integrated into the device overall. That's going to get touched off on later in the presentation. The OPEP has been fully integrated and resized to fit the sprometer. As the internals have been changed and redesigned, the cutout within the sprometer housing allows it to fit within but still be removable as well. And finally, the sprometer has been fully updated to match the full line counterpart that we're basing it off of. Okay, so here we have kind of an update of our OPEP module, and we revised the internals from a flat design to more of an, a two-chamber uh, air channel design that has a floor, and it has the axis offset from the, uh, where the pressure, where the low pressure and high pressure points are. And this is kind of designed to be like compact and fit within the spirometer. And over here, we can see kind of like some flow simulations trying to understand how air flows above, around, and under the air channel. Um, and we kind of manipulate this by adding like two uh, aerodynamic features at the rear, at the rear and the front, um, causing opposing uh, lift and down, downforce forces, as well as a vortex generator to kind of close off the bottom floor. In terms of our electrical system, we decided to fully go with the laser sensor with the laser emitter and receiver rather than the, uh, motion, the motion or proc sensor. And that was just because it was more reliable and we had the circuit fully tested and working. Um, as of right now, we are able to get successful inhalations and record them um, with our system. The only problem that we're currently having is getting it to work when connected to the actual battery rather than connected to um, the computer to get it to run code. And um, we, are getting, we are still trying to implement the five to 10 minute um, reminder. And um, we're gonna try and connect the new OLED display next quarter. Um, as of right now, we are able to make it work with an LCD display, but we are pretty confident that it will just be an addition of certain files in order to make that work. So due to uh, inconsistent uh, data from the LDR, we decided to switch over to a laser, a laser receiver. Um, and um, as you can see, we're using that with our new microcontroller, the QT Pi, which is about half the size of the Pico. Uh, we're able to do tests, we're able to run the microcontroller with our new, um, with our new laser receiver, and uh, the module for the laser receiver, which I'll have Makana talk about. Yeah, so uh, the laser receiver and the laser cell, um, we're the most reliable sense of sensing whether the piston reached um, the subscribed spot from the uh, doctors. So that's why we chose to uh, fully focus on the laser and the laser receiver now. And um, while we had this module for the laser receiver, 
um, in order to implement it with our circuit and in order to um, work our, to focus on our main concern that Kerry highlighted to us, which was sizing. We um, actually added and made this module on our PCB board or our photo board and um, have our, like, our sensor connected from there. And instead of running it from the three volts like we did originally, um, we were running from five volts because it has a lot stronger of a laser in order for the LDR to actually pick it up as it's going through the um, spirometer housing. For our electrical system, for the final deliverable that we were able to accomplish for the end of this quarter, is we wanted to show how our electrical system would sit within the housing or like a general size of what it would look like. So what we did was um, we configured our electrical circuit to fit on this um, photo board and we actually soldered all of the um, components and the microcontroller. Connected, you'll see how the display is connected here through some of the UC cables, um, how the LDR is connected from this IR circuit that, or IR receiver circuit that was on the module prior that we implemented here onto our own photo board, and then um, also how the batteries will kind of um, size com in comparison to the um, PC board that we have. And also here you see the laser connected. We weren't able to test um, this circuit here while it's connected to the battery but we were able to test um, the overall um, sensor here. And um, right now this is a picture, but we have a video showing um, when the piston rises and breaks the actual laser going to the LDR, it um, will tell the user that they completed uh, inhalation through a buzzer within like less than a second. So we were able to accomplish what we wanted to for the electrical system, just not well, a while on the protocol. board. So here we have our adjustable electrical housing unit. The initial prototype that Kerry showed to us was very blocky overall, and while small, didn't seem to really fit with the overall design of the spirometer. Here it has been redesigned to have a low profile, to be more cohesive with the overall design of the spirometer, and since it has a low profile design that matches well with the spirometer body, in the case of heavier units with perhaps larger batteries, or uh, heavier electronic circuits built into it that there won't be any issue of tipping as the full spirometer is, is quite light and made out of plastic. The battery hatch on the side here will allow us access to the replaceable power source, which in this case is two CR2023 coin batteries. The rear portion of the housing will be holding our PCB board and microcontroller. The front half here is going to frame our OLED screen, which will display the patient's information and uh, data in relation to the machine. The endpoints here and here on the housing will hold our laser diode and the diode receiver. So for our E001 specs on how the device is um, recording inhalations, um, and I might dictate for it to pick up the patient in addition therapy. Um, our spec was to do it in less than one second, and only less than one second, and we have achieved that spec. That spec has been met, and we're able to uh, successful, successfully um, turn on the buzzer and also uh, put it on the LCD um, in less than a second every time uh, the inhalation level. Uh, prescribed by the doctor was achieved by the patient. Um, also for E002 on our spec, we're able to accurately count every time that inhalation level was reached. And the way we, we conducted this test was we did uh, 100 um, iterative tests and it was all back to back. 98% uh, passed and only two, uh, two of those tests failed which surpassed our 95% confidence level. I would argue that even the two that failed uh, was because we didn't wait for the code to reset um, uh, the way we, we designed it, uh, and we went a little too fast. Uh, but I would argue that it passed 100 times uh, uh, out of uh, the 100 tests that we conducted. So for our functional specifications in terms of design, uh, the first one, D1, is the refers to the amplitude of the OPEF and how similar it is to the uh, resistances that the aerobeaker provides. 
Our spec is that it shall be within 10% of the resistance of the aerobica. Uh, we still plan on meeting this specification. However, uh, due to printing limitations, we have not been able to get a solid test done for our uh, prototype. Um, so our plans to meet the spec are to print uh, and test further our OPEP design once we get the SLA. Um, the second uh, specification is the OPEP should have five levels of resistance and shall have three levels of resistance. Uh, we have designed uh, we have designed a resistance chamber uh, for a component, uh, but we have not been able to test it yet, as previously mentioned. Uh, so our plans to meet the spec are to have the three print our design done and then test it similar to how we tested the previous spec, or we'll test the previous spec. Uh, our next spec we've met is the spirometer can function without the electrical component. Uh, so since it's just an aesthetic and ergonomic redesign of the spirometer, uh, and we've modeled our current spirometer model one-to-one -one with competing uh, spirometers on the market, we have easily met this specification. Yeah, and the last specification that we wanted to show or um, the design of our spirometer is that it will be able to audibly remind the patient every six minutes to perform an inhalation. And while we've not been able to meet this um, requirement yet, we actually have the circuit set up to where it can. We just have to implement the code and work on that code to get it to remind the user every about 10 minutes. Now for the safety specifications of our design spirometer, we set the requirement that there needs to be no exposed wires. All the wires in our electronics portion are currently concealed thus far. Uh, as, the, as the lead on the electrical housing, I'm doing my best right now to prevent any exposed PCB boards or wires or contacts, especially in the realm of the battery holders since they will be the most exposed and frequently interacted with portion of the whole device. The second specification is that the user cannot access uh, the electrical components. As, the, as I plan for the housing to be put together and assembled via screws, I will be looking into options of safety and security screws to make sure that the end user is not able to take it apart and access it, the unnecessary components, while also maintaining a easy access to the battery compartment of the device since the user will be replacing those batteries every so often for renewal. The DR001 spec is for our display showing the number of successful inhalations every time a successful inhalation level is reached. So for every one, for every inhalation level, it will display success and it will also display that count because we don't want just the audible we want, uh, we are, we, we, our, our, uh, our electronic component will have a, an audible and also a visual for the doctor and for the patient. For DR002, using that same display, we will have other messages other than just successful inhalations, i.e., if the patient uh, is not inhaling, we'll have a message that will entice the patient to inhale slowly. And the reason why we haven't fully met uh, our spec for DR002 is because the LCD display we're using currently is a little bit larger for our project. So for spring quarter, we'll transition into uh, a smaller LCD that will be uh, more appropriate for our project. That's why we, we, we didn't fully meet this spec. But we are confident that during the spring quarter, this spec will be met. So for the physical characteristics specifications, our first one had to do with the overall sizing of the OPEP. We shot for um, under 11 inches in height, uh, within 7 inches in width, and 4 inches in depth. But we aim to have it um, around 10 inches in height, 6 inches in width, and 3 inches in depth. And we're um, fairly within those margins at a height of seven and a quarter inches, uh, six inch width and a three inch depth. And we, like we said earlier, we kind of kept it to similar uh, designs in the market. And um, yeah, 
another physical characteristic that we wanted our sparmer to have and that we plan to show um, with our final prototype is it have an on and off switch that, for it to be able to help preserve the battery life of the system. Um, through here we've actually done power calculations based on the sleep time uh, coded into the sleep mode for the microcontroller, but we haven't taken into consideration when it's on and off yet. We've kind of just done calculations of four run time, so this will help preserve that. Um, the battery also, we have not been able to implement this into our circuit quite yet because, as I said earlier, we're still having troubles um, connecting or getting our microcontroller to run off of the power of the battery. But um, we've actually come to see that through the spec sheet it says we're able to actually power um, our microcontroller from that 5 volt pin. So the issue must be something to do with um, reading the, the specific code while connecting the battery. So we're trying to figure out that and then we are. 100% certain that we should be able to implement a switch in between the battery and the microcontroller to be able to turn on and off the device. Um, another specification that is important for our project is the cost of the overall system. And uh, we said for our specification that we should our electric component should not exceed forty dollars and shall exceed seventy five dollars. As of right now, the total cost that it would take to make our electrical system is under the forty dollars. But we still um, for this next quarter, what we're going to do is. Um, implement a PCB board for our electrical system in order to scale down the sizing of our system based on uh, carries objectives or scalings of size, functionality, and cost. So in order to decrease the size, we're going to print out a PCB board which will raise the cost, um, but it will be under that $75 in, with the addition of a PCB board. We have analysis on the mechanical side. Uh, our spirometer dimensioning and modeling has not changed since GR 2.1. Uh, but what has changed is our OPEC pressure data. Uh, we collected maximum pressure data for the Aerobica with our minimum pressure uh, of 1.59 kPa and our maximum pressure of 2.04 kPa. Uh, we also conducted flow analysis on the oscillating mechanism that Omar designed uh, in SOLIDWORKS and Omar discussed that previously. Um, so, yeah. yeah, some other analysis we've done on the electrical side. One thing is we've completely selected the sensor that we're going to use. We've completely dropped the prox and gesture sensor and have completely focused on the laser emitter and receiver. Another thing that we've updated is the power consumption. Before, we were based on the assumption that we wanted our system to work for 7 to 80 hours, but with the change of wanting it to only, or needing it to work for 25 hours, for the 5 hours a day for 5 days, we were able to see that the max load that it would require is 2.046. And this is with a full run popcorn mode throughout the whole 25 hours. And the minimum load with the changing sleep time and popcorn time would require a quad hours of 0 0.6138. And um, in order to accomplish that, we've been able to make or select a battery size of two CR2032 watch batteries with that will provide 1.41 watt hours. And with these calculations, we've noticed that our system should, um, based on the specs and calculations, should last for at least 11 days. Another thing that we've done is the wiring and component layout, how we plan these, our electrical system to actually sit within this housing and how we plan to connect our sensor to the, the microcontroller. And what we've done is we utilize a 7QT cable to connect our OLED display in a more simpler way and we're using uh, 22 gauge wires to co connect everything else inside the system as of right now. But later on, um, with the addition of a PCB, PCB board, we will mitigate a lot of the wires that we need in our system. Some other things that um, haven't changed are, well, we've dropped the APDS 966 module and the sensor distance and orientation. The GPIO pins that we're using have stayed the same. We're um, also using the same software IDE of CircuitPython and MicroPython. Um, we've finally um, singled down on the circuit microcontroller that we're planning on using. We had a lot of options when we talk, talked about it with you guys last quarter, such as the Pico still, the, RP, the QDPI RP2040, and I think this other ESP microcontroller. So we've actually finally selected the QD5 R2040 due to its smaller size and its um, functionality pins, and the data retention has remained the same. Okay, so for the mechanical uh, schedule, over break, I'll be getting the website design. Omar will be working on uh, flow simulations for the OPEP internals, and Jason will be collaborating with Makana on the PCB design so that it fits within the electrical housing. For week one, the OPEP team, specifically Nate and Omar, will be working on the T-valve integration so that error can flow between both the OPEP and the spirometer. 
as well as they will be working on the axis rotation and center of mass balancing that needs to happen with the flutter inside the OPEC device. It will be based off of airflow sense that they perform, it's all works. And the, for the electric housing uh, standoffs for the PCB board and screw holes for assembly of the entire housing will be added. Following that week two on the OPEP, we will refine the uh, pressure resistance component and uh, further develop the electrical housing to work more smoothly with this grommet. All right, so for week three, the OPEP team will complete a fully functional OPEP assembly um, and the electrical housing print components and practice assemblies, um, and then we'll take notes on issues and assembly steps. For week four, the OPEP team will be adjusting all the areas to match the performance of the Aerobica, our main rival and competitor. The electrical housing uh, around this time should have access to the PCB and most of the electrical components, so we'll be doing test fits during that week. Uh, week five, we'll be working on the T-valve integration connecting the OPEP, the OPEP and the spirometer, uh, as well as uh, further developing anything that has to do with the axis of rotation or any information we gain from the flow simulations, and again, further development on the electrical housing. Um, yeah, so for week six, the OPEP team will refine adjustability of resistance pressure, of the resistance for pressure component, um, and the electrical housing uh, will make changes based off the assembly notes and issues that have been arisen after the testing previous week. For week seven, the OPEP team will finish the functional OPEP assembly and have a prototype model that is available for use in practical, real-life uh, tests. The electrical housing will make any final necessary changes uh, of the electronics portion and final assembly. And we, gave, we hope to have it, the entire electrical housing uh, printed and assembled on this browser. For a schedule on the electrical sense, we're one of the biggest things that we'll be working on to start off this quarter, or the basically um, everything else throughout the, the this quarter is dependent on is how quickly we're able to design and order our PCB, and the reason why we're utilizing the PCB, like I said earlier, so we can get that sizing of our electrical system smaller. So over the break, my plan is to be able to fully design the PCB to be um, implemented within the system. And then we're also, for Sega Geek plans on researching the methods of implementing the OLED display and battery with the microcontroller. So it's figuring out with the code, how to get the code to actually run while connected to the battery, and um, which libraries are necessary in order to get the OLED display, the new OLED display to work. For the first week, um, after um, confirmation with Dr. Liu of um, a good PCB board that will work and it makes sense, We'll order it um, throughout the first week, and then after the first week, we also want to be able to fully um, have our microcontroller interface and working from a battery source as well. Um, the second week, we want to be able to implement a code that uh, involves inhalation reminder every five to 10 minutes, and we also want to have the integration of our OLED display with our microcontroller done um, in the sense of an electrical contact and how it will fit in the housing, also with the code that we use. Um, for week three, we plan to order any additional components that are needed for that electrical circuit um, so that the next week when we get our PCB board, we're able to start receiving property and testing it. Um, we also want to record our current load of the electrical system based on the proto board that we actually soldered this quarter and uh, get the loads based on the different popcorn and sleep modes so we can get a more accurate power consumption um, number. Um, throughout the fourth week, we plan to we hopefully we'll get our PCB board by then so we can start um, populating it with the components and testing it um, while it's connected to the battery. We also want to interface it, yet, like we said, with the switch battery, record the loaded current draws of the circuit laws on the PCB in order to make more accurate um, battery consumption calculations. And we also want to start um, figuring out the user interface section and how we will um, be showing the user that they've completed inhalation and what will happen with, when they click the reset button and just all those things. Um, week five, we want to finalize this user interface and fully have our batteries tested. That is um, disconnecting our batteries to the system and letting it fully run and never turning off so we can see like, the full um, hours of full battery capacity being used. Um, for week six, we plan to fully configure this electrical system within the housing. Um, we will be working on this from week four when we actually get the PCB board tested. 
but um, this is the last week we want it to be done, and we want it to completely test the system again with the spirometer by then. And this final integration will be done by week seven, a final test, and then a final inspection of the electrical housing and the wires um, within to make sure that none of it is exposed and no, not, none of the other electrical components are exposed as well. And then week eight will be a uh, completing final presentations and completing the team website based on what the electrical things need to be added.